everyone. How are we doing today? So first things first, I just want to apologize for that last video. It was rather long. Uh, we did get the full enemy completion, the full enemy loop done, but it was too long. And I will try to keep my videos shorter like I have been from now on. Um, today, I'm also going to try to preview what we're going to do. So today we're going to refactor our enemy a little bit. Uh, right now we only have one aggro range in this enemy. And also, when you shoot projectile, you can't hit him. So we're going to change that. We're also going to fix the projectile to not get stuck to disappear right away when it hits the wall. You can keep this effect, but um, it might cause problems. So we'll fix that. And then, so yeah, we're going to add another aggro range, and we're going to call this the D aggro range. So the initial aggro range you're going to walk into, it's going to follow. But then to D aggro, you have to get out of that larger range. We're also going to make it to where you can hit with projectiles, no matter what state it's going into. Because, uh, in yeah, well, you can't hit the projectiles anyway on that on our original enemy. But this one, yeah, you'll be able to attack him from anything, any state. So when he was getting up there, sleeping, walking, etc. So let's get started with that. And so let's go to our objects. Go to our, our enemy log here. And we're going to go to the field of vision first off. Let's get that. So we have an initial aggro range, which I'm not sure. I might have left this name here. So let's rename this to the initial aggro range. And then we're going to want another field of vision called the D aggro range. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy the 180 distance radius. And then instead of, so we're just going to copy the, the size of it. And then we're going to just scale it. I'm going to scale it by 50%. And so now when we preview, we can see that the new Diagra radius is now around our old enemy. Now we can't see the initial one because we turned it off. So if we turn it on real quick, we can hit preview and now we can see it. And preview, if as you can tell, it throws the object in the map right away. So that's why that this annoying little guy is here <laughs> when we click preview. Which is nice because it throws the object in the map just for you to see what it looks like. And that's it for setting up the field of vision. Just one quick thing, say you want your field of vision closer, you can always move the tab closer to you. I'm just going to keep it far because we only have to set up certain things and then we're done with it. So on this transition, we have the initial aggro as the transition condition. And that's fine because it's going from sleep, has the smaller initial aggro, and then it wakes up. So when it goes back to sleep though, it's it was when it lost when it was not in that aggro range, fill division range. But we want the, to change this to the D aggro range now, because that's when we want it to go back to sleep is when we're out of that bigger D aggro range. And again, have the not in there. And so that is good for that. So let's now make it to where projectiles can hit, and. One thing was, is we added hit detect detection by player. And that was fine because on our animations, right, our player sword attack has a hit detection, you know, on certain frames. But our projectile is a sword bullet and it's its own animation. So what I forgot to do last time was we can just copy and paste, but we'll click into here. And instead of on player, we also want the sword bullet. Again, affecting all. And we'll hit OK. And we want to change this to or. Because it can be the enemy player's attack detection. Or the sword bullet's attack detection. And now let's test this out. And let's go to... Yeah, actually, yeah, let's, for now, yeah. So this is our new one. This is the one with the sword bullet that we just set up. And it does nothing when he's in idle. However, when you aggro him, it should start working, and it did. So 
<coughs> let's restart this. You can hit F5 to restart. So you can see that it now takes effect when he's walking towards you. So hit F5 again, but he doesn't do anything while idle. He also won't get hit when you when he's waking up. See, it didn't hit him. So we're going to change that now. And the way we're going to do it is first I'll show you the messy way to do it. And then we'll work on the clean way. So the one thing that we need is we need transitions from sleeping, wake up, and back to sleep all to hit by player. So we're going to right click on this transition. We're going to copy it. We're going to go to back to sleep and we're going to hit paste link and we're going to paste it to hit by player. We're going to right click on idle, paste link, go to hit by player. And we're going to right click on wake up, paste link, and go to hit by player. Again, this looks really messy. It gets better. So now we're going to hit play and let's just test, make sure our projectiles hit when he's in uh, sleeping and it hits. But he kind of goes right back to sleep. That doesn't really look good. Oh yeah, let's wake him up and try to hit him. So right when we enter, I'm going to projectile swing. Boom. Okay, good. It hits. But like we saw here, I'll hit F5 again. It, he just goes right back to sleep. That's kind of a, not a very fun reaction. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make another option for when the player is hit. And how we're going to do that is we're going to we're going to copy this current move towards player cuz this this works really nice actually. We have it all set up for the most part and we're going to name this hit while idle. And what hit while idle is going to do is it's going to do the same thing. It's going to move towards the player we're actually going to increase its speed by 100 by 50%. So now it will be 50% faster as it's trying to catch up to you because it's angry. We do need to keep the filter and we need to keep all this stuff. But one thing we're going to do is we're going to add a transition. And let's copy this transition. And let's paste it here. And we're going to move it down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a switch that basically says where you hit while you were um, idle or where you hit while you were already aggro. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to go to our switch management here. We're going to right click and add a switch. We're going to move it all the way to the top so that we don't have to, so that it's it's available on the uh, drop down menu right away. And we're going to call this is aggro and default it to on. And we do want it to save for some reason that we save it. And that's how you create a switch. That's it. Notice it has these green switches. These are built in switches that are available for every object basically and you can see you can turn the invincibility on off free movement on off lock target all that stuff but we're creating our own and what we're going to do is when the player is moving it's it is aggro so during this state because remember this is a state machine they're called infinite uh, finite state machines and so in this state, we are going to change the switch of this object of is aggro, and we're going to turn it on. We're going to hit OK. And it even says is aggro switch will now be on. We're going to move this up because we want it to happen first thing. Then you can start the move, and then you can delete the filter, or you can delete the filter and then start to move. That part really doesn't matter, but I'll, I want my switch to be first thing that's ran. And then we need the requirement. Oh, and then we need it. 
let's let's set the state that's not aggro. So moving towards player is aggro. And also we want to copy the switch and put it on the idle too, because if you and then I'll just do it the same that I have it here. And now it's there we go. Because if you're hit while idle, you are now aggro. So there's going to be two places that you are aggro switch turns on. And now we need it to turn off. Well, we could turn it off on sleep. But it's, it's actually we need to turn it off when it goes back to sleep. That initial back to sleep is when we will turn it off. So we can actually just copy this. Go, let's see, did I save it that time? Yeah, I did. Go back to sleep, paste it. I'll just move it up again. Double click into it and turn it off. So now we know our state of moving and hit while idle. It's going to turn aggro on. And when it goes back to sleep, it's going to turn aggro off. So now we're going to add this condition to these um or this switch to these conditions. So for this one, after a certain amount of time passes, which was 0 0.3, we're also going to refactor this just real quick also by adding in HP is not zero. So we're going to add this in, we're going to say and not zero. Because I, I figured out that instead of having to change this to 0 0.2 to try to beat the time, you can now keep it at the same, which is 0.3. But the other condition was the HP is zero, where now this one is the HP is not zero and a certain amount of time passes. So that's one another way we could bypass that. And that's what we're going to do. And then the last thing we need to add is and the switch, which is right here for this objects is aggro is on. So if the aggro switch is on, then we do want it to go back to the moving towards player loop. If the aggro switch is off, because remember, you can now get hit from sleeping to idle, and you can now get hit from back to sleep. So you can technically get hit with when this switch is off from these transitions right here. So if you do get hit while the switch is off, let me copy all of these and we'll go to this transition we'll delete this and we'll paste them so we also want the HP to not equal zero and when you paste a transition not equal to you have to re not equal it just so just for clarification so to go back to this state the switch has to be on but to go to hit while idle, the switch is going to be off. And the reason, the reason why is because we want this one to do something different. We want this one to do the same thing as moving towards idle, but we want it to move whether there is the field of vision or not. And so we are going to make, we are going to add the link back to hit by player, or actually, sorry, back to moving towards player. And it's going to be after a certain amount of time passes. And we're going to say two seconds. So it's going to follow you for two seconds. And then it will go back to the loop that starts detecting whether you're in the field of vision or not. Again, this is starting to look a little messy but it, there is a shortcut that we'll probably get to on the next video because this one's already getting a little longer. So let's see if our loop worked for our new, this is our original log right here. So he's in idle and we're gonna shoot a projectile and it hits him. And then he's chasing us out of the field of vision for two seconds and goes back into, into idle. You can now hit him he aggers you right here. He de aggers you right here. You can hit him while he's waking up. Boom. Got him. 
And so we got our full loop. Also notice he's not really fast right here. The agrim hit him while he's out of aggro and he's 50% faster, if you remember. Oh, <laughs> I didn't change his life here. Let's see here. Okay, so he's 50% faster when he's hit during idle. And then you'll see him slow down. Oh, I'll let him get in range of me and then you'll see him slow down here. There he goes, he slowed down. All right, so that's it for this video. Next video, I will show you how to clean these transitions up, make it look a little more tidy and readable.